Welcome to Carmen's DIY Garage. Hit subscribe to the channel if you want to hang with me in future videos. But on this one, I want to fix this noise. What noise is it that you're hearing? It's that ticking noise. It's kind of in the background. It's not very loud today, but uh, it is loud on some days, and I know it's not a good thing. I have to go pinpoint where it's coming from, but it's definitely on the accessory drive side of the engine, the 3.6 liter Pentastar. It's a transversely installed, so it's on the passenger side where all the pulleys and belts are, and uh, let's go figure out what's going on. There are pluses and minuses for this being a transverse installation of the engine. The plus is that things like the PCV valve are pretty easy to replace. The minus is that if you want to get to the belt and uh, pulleys, you have to come in through the fender liner. So you got to remove the tire, got it up on jack stand. And then these push pins, they come out, there's three on the front, um, one, two in the back, and then one, two screws on each side on um, the bumper, bumper cover, and then the fender. Get all that removed, and then this entire fender liner will come out. And just to say it now, uh, video is going to be spotty on this because it's a really small area of access, and I don't know how well I'm going to be able to give you camera shots and actually get the work done, but I'm going to do my best. So please be patient and tolerant on this video. So you do have now a little bit of access uh, really to the CV joints and power steering back there, but you don't really have access to the front of the engine because this splash guard is also in the way. And uh, there are two 10 millimeter bolts that you need to remove and then a push pin, Christmas tree fastener down here, and then this will come off as well. All right, so now we have full access to the side or the front of the motor and um, I guess it doesn't really look this way because you really can't see the top of it because the, the body and the frame is in the way. But when you're under the vehicle, you can actually have space to get up to here. You can access all the rotating parts. Um, but first thing I want to do is I want to see if I can figure out if it's the harmonic balancer or the damper here or if it's one of the other pulleys. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to start the van and see if I can tell just by watching or listening um, if it's pretty obvious. Um, We'll go from there. All right, based on the video of it running, I am gonna say that it is the harmonic balancer that's starting to fail. And the reason for that, you can see in the video that the engine was shaking around a bit. Uh, I'm not smart enough and experienced enough to know if it shouldn't look like that if the balancer is working perfectly normal. So I'm just observing that, but I can see that it's starting to crack between the, the rubber and the, the metal of the pulley is starting to crack a bit and uh, pull away. Uh, also, there's some oil tracking here on the bottom of the case leading up to this bolt head, which makes me uh, pretty confident that there's a leak in the seal between the, um, the damper and the crankcase. So I wanna get that repaired as well. Um, also not showing you on video uh, because it's a little bit of sketchy shit. I also took um, a prolonged extension like th this and uh, did the uh, poor man's mechanic stethoscope up against the pulleys and the, the idler pulley, um, the tensioner, the alternator, the water pump to listen to see if any of those had any rough sounding bearings. They all sounded really smooth. So the bearings sound smooth and uh, this pulley is giving me the side eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the harmonic balancer. Most vehicles have a, a schematic of what the belt is supposed to look like up in the engine compartment on like the front over top of the bumper or something. I couldn't find it. So I just uh, sketched one out and uh, yeah, I don't, won't win any awards, but I know how the belt goes back on before I take it off. So you just need to put a 3 8 inch drive ratchet up here in the tensioner in the square that's up here and then put it in the uh, loosened direction, the counterclockwise direction, and that'll help you get it off. But uh, standard size wrench is not going to give you enough leverage probably. So either something longer or a cheater bar, but um, then just give it uh, full counterclockwise as far as you can and then uh, pull the belt off. With the belt out, just give it a quick look uh, inside and outside. You're looking for cracking, fraying, obvious damage, uh, anything that might 
be a problem, especially if you think the harmonic balancer is a problem because it can actually cause the belt to fray quite a bit. And you look at other videos on YouTube when it, it can actually, a bad balancer can actually take the, your, your belt all the way to destruction. So do an inspection. If uh, it's old, tired, any evidence of any kind of wear or damage, replace it. It's super cheap and definitely a good thing to have insurance uh, that you're not worried about it breaking later. Mine's in really good shape, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on when we're done. Running it with the belt off, and if you still hear that ticking noise that you were worried about, that is obviously gonna to point to the harmonic balancer because nothing else is spinning on the engine. Um, I can still faintly hear the ticking noise that I was worried about, so I think uh, pretty confident that it's the balancer that is uh, probably on the way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. Replacement part is uh, pretty inexpensive, and honestly, the hardest part's already done. It's getting access to it. The nice thing about this transverse installed engine is that I can get an impact right here straight onto this nut, and it should come off pretty easily versus the longitudinal installation like the Jeep Wranglers. Um, you have a radiator and fan in the way that makes it more complicated, but uh, I do have a one and one sixteenth inch um, socket for my impact, and hopefully this nut and bolt will come off pretty easily. Five minutes later. So now this should just slide right out. It should um, just be a friction fit and it should just come right out. And of course it's not that simple. There we go. So it does, it does just pull right out. Just doing a quick inspection. First you can see back here, there is a key on the, uh, the dowel and the, it's the crankshaft really, um, that key is gonna fit into the slot on the pulley. And then this is a seal. And honestly, it's not all beat up and I thought it would be cracked or something. I'm still gonna replace it, but um, you know, maybe it's not as bad off as I thought because I, you know, there's oil tracks down here and I thought that would be a source for it. So maybe there's oil leaking from somewhere else. I'll have to worry about that on another day. But um, this all looks to be in good shape. Looking at the new one and the old one on the front, um, this one, the, the rubber definitely protrudes more from the face of the pulley than this one. The old one, it's uh, pretty much sitting flush. And uh, so, and you can see here that um, there's some separation of the rubber, uh, especially over here from the pulley face. So maybe it was starting to fail. I don't know. Uh, you can see there's separation all the way around on this one. So I guess, uh, Who's to say, but uh, this is what the new one looks like and we'll go ahead and put it in. I'm thinking this video might turn out into just a how to replace a harmonic balancer, even though I may not have needed to do it. But hey, at least we'll uh, get to learn together on how to do this. Before we put the new one in, like I said, we're gonna replace the seal here. And um, for those of you that have supported the channel financially, I appreciate it. I bought this set of automotive picks to uh, help me with things like this uh, directly from your contributions to the channel. So uh, anything you do with from buy me a coffee or super thanks, that really helps me out. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this and work on pulling this old seal out. Um, you wanna be very careful not to scratch or mar this uh, surface. Uh, and you really don't wanna scratch or mar anything, but this just needs a, should just be a bit of a tug uh, to break it free. So in the few videos that I found on how to replace the crankshaft um, seal or the balancer and the seal, um, it really quickly showed people just uh, pulling the old seal out and it came out real easily. That uh, was not the case for me and I don't think that's really realistic based on how these are pressed in. Um, you can see that they look pretty similar to axle bearing seals and they are a press fit. So I tried using the small pick that you guys helped pay for with uh, contributions to the channel and that was not successful. So I did find a trick using a um, 
paint can opener and getting that in behind the seal and then using an extension through the eyelet and then that gave me enough leverage to pull it out and that's a couple tugs and that finally got it out but I spent about 30 minutes wrestling with uh, that and this is the new seal looks just like the old one and this is the part number for it and it is a precision bearing and I'll uh, company uh, precision seal and I'll leave a link in the video description but now we'll just go put it in and uh, tap it in place And that's all there is to it. It actually presses in pretty easily to get started because it's got that rubber coating and then just tapping on it all the way around like you saw to get it fully seated up against the rest, the shoulder that's inside there. But uh, that's it, now it's installed. So the next step is to take the new pulley and install it. And again, you've got the keyway here uh, inside the pulley and then you can just look straight on. I know you can't see it in this shot, but you look straight on and the key itself is over on this side. Just line that up and then it's just a, uh, push it in until it's firmly seated. And with the pulley fully seated, we'll just take our bolt, thread it in. I'm gonna use a ratchet wrench first just to get it snug and then use the impact to get it torqued down. And that is it for replacing this uh, pulley and seal. It really was not that difficult. Uh, the impact, um, using my electric one, it took about two minutes of uh, putting impact on it, breaking that up every 20 seconds or so to get the bolt out. Uh, it's torqued down pretty, pretty good, but the electric impact wrench uh, did get there eventually. The longest part of this was figuring out how to get the seal out. And hopefully my tip to you on that will prevent you from wasting a lot of time doing that. Otherwise, this is a pretty straightforward job. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the engine without the belt on it, make sure that it is uh, wobble free or at least compare it to how it was before. Then I'll put the belt back on, put the shields back in place, put the tire back on, and we'll be all done. So um, I will let the video keep rolling to uh, show you here when it starts up. But thanks for watching. If you watch this far, please consider subscribing. I appreciate the contributions to the channel. I use that money to buy new tools, like the tools I used in this video. You can use Super Thanks or buy me a coffee for that. And uh, if anything else, comments or questions, drop them below. And there's always lots of other good content coming. So until that next video, you guys take care and have a good one.